the social behavior the same, and how does a frontal subcortical feedback loop circuit do this behavior? Um, recently in our evolution, uh, we developed a prefrontal cortex and the ability to do social behavior. This means that we can monitor how others are viewing our behavior and feel good or bad as a result. For example, when the medial orbital frontal cortex wants to tell a lie to someone, it sends information to alert subcortical structures that others might disapprove. These subcortical structures send information to end organs that cause us to be anxious and nervous. These same structures also relay information back to the prefrontal cortex in a feedback loop. The medial orbital frontal cortex is then stimulated to resend or keep sending this information back to subcortical structures until it is told to stop. The dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, on the other hand, processes more pragmatic and independent types of thinking. It is also connected to the subcortex and to the other parts of the prefrontal cortex. It's important to point out that the difference between these prefrontal structures is graduated, not demarcated, from medial to lateral and from orbital to dorsal, that is, from back to front and from top to bottom. This means that we are not talking about an all-or-nothing type phenomena, but about a range of responses. Across a large number of humans, there is also a range from intense social monitoring to intense independent thinking. Basically, some people have stronger orbital frontal cortexes, some people might have stronger dorsolateral prefrontal cortexes. Uh, for, in other words, uh, you know, you can think of it as a spectrum from like Newt to Barack. <laughs> well, anyways, whether we are talking about a group of nuns, athletes, opera singers, accountants, thieves, artists, or whatever, social behavior is coordinated in these frontal subcortical circuits. We tend to think that religious behavior is somehow different because religions tend to focus so much on the belief system. But you must realize, wherever there is social behavior, there's going to be a belief system. Even a group like the Denver Atheists share a belief system, and one that is not always perfectly accurate, I might add. <laughs> Thus, you can think of a modern religion as an amalgamation of our natural, innate, pre-programmed, emotion-based social feedback brain and our more pragmatic, rationalizing, reflective, processing brain. The individuals who strongly believe things on faith probably use the social feedback end of the range to a greater degree. The individuals that read and write and study, such as priests and rabbis and scientists, probably use the rationalizing part of the range to a greater extent. Now, interestingly, and I think any priest or rabbi would agree with this, most of the individuals who are in a church or a temple on a regular basis, that is, the most strong believers, tend to ignore what the priest or the rabbi is talking about. They tend to do religion in a more indigenous way. For example, my very orthodox uh, Christian wife totally believes in ghosts and numerology and thinks that revenge is a good thing. I'm thinking, okay, is there anything that she believes that is consistent with Christian theology? You see, I think that priests and rabbis are guys who really want to be religious for social reasons, but their dorsal lateral prefrontal cortexes are too strong to allow them to simply relax and do indigenous social religion. Therefore, they dedicate themselves to study and learning and rationalizing. Ultimately, all this rationalizing results in a bunch of pseudological, what I call mumbo jumbo, being heaped on to the basic socializing way that we do religion.